Dr. McCarter, I followed you very well when you were talking about the sovereignty of the Lord and that he has willed evil to exist, but I completely lost you when you started talking about the wrath of God. Who is he mad at? What is he mad at? Un unless he's given some choices, why would he be mad? Well, um, God is not mad in the sense that we think of, you know, some days you're happy and some days you're mad. God is angry all the time. <laughs> all the time. At his creation? He is angry all the time at sin. He is he's angry every hour of every day at sin because all of God's attributes are always fully operational at all times. He's also loving all the time, gracious all the time, merciful all the time, etc., etc. So you don't want to think of God as sort of getting ticked off on a certain day and drowning some country. Um, <laughs> there is a steady reality to the wrath of God. God is angry and necessarily angry. God is angry and necessarily angry over everything that violates His holiness. And He has to be. You know, we had a talk about this um, Sinclair Ferguson and I were at the Banner of Truth Conference in England, uh, Ian Murray's thing, and the question came up about why would Jesus say when he, when he went to the garden, uh, Father, let this cup pass from me. And Sinclair said if he didn't say that, he wouldn't have been consistent with his holy nature because he was about to become an object of God's wrath, a sin-bearing substitute. This repulsed everything in him. It was, it was expected that he would say that because it was so contrary. For us, it's contrary to our nature to do what's right, for his to, to, to do righteously. For him, it was contrary to his nature to sin. God is all the time angry with sin because it violates His holiness, because it pollutes His universe, and He will judge every sinner. But at the same time, all His other attributes are working at the same time. So it's not that when we get mad, everything else disappears. Is that what you mean? I'm, I'm truly trying to understand you. Isn't what just you said, that He's all the time angry at sin, question His sovereignty? Because a sovereign Lord, would, how would he allow um, a situation to go contrary to his will? Because, to make him angry and wrathful. Because anger for him is not a sin. Anger for him is a manifestation of his holiness. It's a manifestation of his righteousness. And he has every right and every desire to put his full glory on display. Do you understand that there's such a thing as righteous anger? Yes. Would you be angry if somebody came in and molested your child? Would you be angry if someone murdered your, a member of your family? That is a righteous indignation. God's anger is always righteous anger. It is never sinful anger, and it is consistent with his righteousness to have that anger. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I just add one thing there, just to, to put a second on his uh, view? God ordains evil does not mean that evil is good. We can't call good evil and evil good. That's not what John is doing. He's saying that nothing can come to pass except through the sovereign will of God. And that in a certain sense, God wills whatsoever comes to pass, including the fall. And he wills that for his own glory because he is willing that there be evil. It's not because he thinks evil is good, but he thinks it's good that there is evil. Because even in the presence of evil, he manifests his righteousness, he manifests his holiness, and when he wills evil to come into being, he wills at the same time his own wrath against it. So there's no real contradiction here. But